I'm in Krakow, Poland, and today I will talk about our SuperPages implementation for FreeBSD on ARM. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, I, will, I will be speaking about the transparent SuperPages support for FreeBSD on ARM. Uh, can't hear. Now, testing, testing. Can you see the, um, the microphones, please? Okay. No. Okay, that's not good. And the second one? Second one. And what's with the um, with, with the screen? Something with the screen. Sorry for the delay, but something is wrong with the screen. I don't want to clone the screen. I don't want to clone the screen, so. Okay. Give me a second. No. Oh, go to no, we are cloning. Okay. Greetings, everyone. My name is Bigniew Bodek. I work in Semihalf in Krakow, Poland. And today I will be talking about uh, our implementation of the transparent super pages for FreeBSD on ARM. Uh, the super pages. Uh, is a technique that uh, can significantly improve the performance um, on the way uh, from the CPU to the memory. Uh, it has been utilized on uh, i386 and AMD64 platforms for a long time and uh, gave excellent results. 
uh, our goal was to uh, bring that support uh, to the recently popular ARM architecture on FreeBSD. So I would like to start uh, with a quick overview of the virtual memory. For those who are not familiar with the concept, uh, I hope this will unclose some principles of operation. Then I will move uh, to the drawbacks and limitations of that technique. And hopefully uh, this will be a good introduction to the super pages mechanism itself. Uh, so uh, at that point I would like to spend some time talking about uh, the basic concepts of the generic layer of super pages support that was uh, incorporated uh, in the FreeBSD. Then I will move to uh, the implementation that we've made for ARM v6 and v7 processors. Uh, and at the end of my presentation, I will uh, tell you something about the validation process and benchmarking that we did. Uh, I will tell you something about uh, the tools that we used to validate our implementation and what are the results of the benchmarks that we did. And of course, summarizing the presentation, I will uh, say a few words about the future work and possible uh, improvements that can be done in this area. Uh, so going next, um, so the CPU core uses so-called virtual address to refer to any particular location in the memory. So um, the address space that is visible to the CPU is often called the virtual address space. But on the other hand, uh, we have real or physical address space uh, that can incorporate uh, all the system bus agents like uh, mind memory, SOC registers, uh, I.O., etc. And the virtual memory uh, introduces an additional layer of translation between those two spaces, uh, effectively separating them and uh, providing uh, the illusionary uh, private work environment for each process that is running in the system. Uh, however, this kind of uh, feature requires some sort of uh, support from the hardware side, but uh, all application processors provide the memory management unit, which is the hardware component that handles all uh, the translations between virtual and physical other spaces. Uh, and the translation itself uh, is performed uh, with the granulation to page. And the page is uh, a portion of the virtual address space that corresponds to the physical frame of the say size. Uh, and architecture can support multiple page sizes. Uh, however, if the CPU is going to access uh, any of the virtual address, uh, the translation has to be provided by the MMU and the translations for the MMU are kept uh, in the uh, physical memory in the form of uh, the virtually indexed arrays, so-called page tables on or on ARM uh, translation tables. And to speed up this process, uh, the MMU has uh, a table of uh, cached uh, translations that it was using uh, recently uh, called translation lookaside buffer so that we will not have to access the page tables each time when we access the memory itself. Uh, in addition, in a typical computer system, the memory is divided or can be divided into a few general layer, layers. Uh, and so we have the memory that is very close to the CPU core, like uh, CPU registers and caches. Then we have a mine memory, which is usually DRAM. And of course, the external storages like SSDs, NFS, and so on. And virtual memory system is responsible for deciding uh, which part of, uh, of the externally resident data uh, has to be copied to the mind memory so that the CPU can access it, and which can be still resident in an external memory, or has to be copied to the external memory uh, to make room for some some other data uh, or instructions in the, in the memory. So basing on that knowledge, 
we can divide uh, our virtual memory system in FreeBSD into two main parts. Uh, the methods and algorithms or to memory man, uh, of memory management that are common to all architectures uh, are incorporated in the VM subsystem and that is, uh, that is machine depend, uh, independent and super pages support was already there when we started our work uh, and we have also the machine dependent uh, portion of virtual memory which is called PMAP uh, and it, it is operating on uh, architecture dependent uh, structures and basically is, it is running on the underlying hardware and our work was focused mainly on, the, on this component. So now let's take a look at uh, how we access the memory on ARM processors. Uh, the CPU invokes the virtual address. Uh, when the CPU invokes the virtual address, the MMU and needs to find the corresponding entry in the translation lookaside buffer. Uh, if there is uh, a proper translation in the TLB, uh, so we have the TLB hit and the access is granted almost immediately. According to the documentation uh, on the modern arms, uh, the TLB hit penalty is about uh, 0.5 to one, to one CPU cycle, uh, so it's almost free. But the problem is when we have uh, the TLB miss, so we miss in the TLB, there is no corresponding entry uh, in the translation because the buffer, then uh, the MMU has to find the proper translation uh, in the translation tables. So it performs so-called the translation table walk uh, through the page tables in the memory in order to find the entry that is, uh, which is going to be then uh, inserted into the TLB so that we hit in the TLB next time we try to access uh, this, this region of memory. Uh, if we fail uh, finding a proper translation in the translation tables, uh, we'll need to, um, to handle uh, a very expensive uh, data or prefetch abort, which will probably result in inserting another entry in the page tables or uh, further fa failure. Uh, in addition, the TLBs on ARM are fully hardware managed. It means that uh, is, uh, the entry insertion or uh, eviction uh, as well as uh, the translation table work itself is performed by the ARM hardware. So uh, we do not have uh, the direct access to any of the TLB contents. Uh, so now we can see two possible drawbacks in that architecture. First of all, uh, we really want our TLBs to be very fast. Uh, this usually means that they have to remain small because uh, the more entries we keep in the TLB, the more logic we require. Uh, and that involves uh, higher power consumption and uh, usually uh, lower speed. So on ARM, when we want, uh, where we want our uh, CPUs uh, to be very uh, energy efficient and fast. Uh, we keep our TLBs very small. It's usually a few dozens of entries, so it's quite small in comparison, for example, to, to Intel processors. Uh, and the second drawback is that despite the architecture um, uh, supports multiple page sizes, we, we usually use the smallest one uh, available. For example, on ARM, uh, when using short descriptor, uh, table descriptor format, uh, so when the large physical ex uh, extension is, uh, is uh, disabled, uh, we can use four kilobyte pages. Uh, these are uh, small pages. Uh, 64 kilobyte uh, huge pages, one megabyte section mappings, and 16 megabyte super section mappings. However, uh, as I said before, we use only four kilobyte pages. Uh, this is uh, caused by the fact that uh, it's easier to uh, it's easier to uh, control the fragmentation when we uh, when our uh, basic allocation unit is uh, small than uh, if it's big. Uh, so, in order to maintain the uh, good fragmentation control, we want our uh, pages to to be. Uh, fragmented, right. Uh, in addition, 
when uh, handling a TLB miss, we have to perform uh, two memory accesses. First is performed to the L1 table, which serves as a page directory. It has uh, 4,096 uh, elements, uh, each of which is uh, pointing to the L2 table. And then we have to perform a second access to L2 table, uh, which has 256 elements, each of which uh, is mapping four kilobyte um, uh, page. As, uh, the two structures in the middle are actually PMAP specific and the L1 table and L2 table are the only structures that are visible uh, to the underlying hardware. But in general, uh, we have to perform two memory accesses to get our entry to the TLB. So all of this gives us very small TLB coverage. So TLB coverage is a factor that describes uh, how, ma how much memory can uh, CPU access without the TLB miss. So in our case, it would be around a few hundred kilobytes. Uh, and uh, in addition, we can experience uh, a phenomenon called the TLB trashing, uh, when we operate on a big set of uh, data and uh, we're looping over the data, then uh, we need to actually evict some, uh, some entries in the TLB uh, that will, exo uh, that will uh, exhaust fast and uh, put the new entries uh, in their place. But in a moment, we will need to use the old entries again. So we will need to evict the new entries and put the old entries again, and so on and so on. And this can uh, give serious uh, mm, performance degradation. So summarizing this, uh, our limitations are because of the small TLBs mm, due to speed restrictions, and because uh, we usually uh, use the smallest available page size uh, so, so that we could maintain the dense granulation and low memory fragmentation factor. And what we can do to overcome the, those issues? Well, we could, for example, enlarge the TLB if we are uh, the hardware uh, designers. But as I said before, uh, this is not uh, always a good idea. Uh, we could use the bigger pages, but uh, what with our uh, what is going to be with our uh, fragmentation, and maybe we could allow the user to decide which page size to use. Well, this kind of contradicts uh, the idea of uh, virtual memory as uh, a transparent layer for a user, and usually a user will probably uh, use the huge pages in a wrong way, right? So, uh, in that place uh, comes the super pages technique, which overcomes those issues by reducing uh, TLB misses uh, with uh, dynamic enlargement of the uh, TLB coverage according to the actual system needs at that time. So, uh, if we have applications that are very memory hungry, uh, their memory is mapped with super pages and other applications which are not so memory hungry have their pages mapped with base pages so this is a, this is a good compromise between uh, the system requirements and uh, maintaining good uh, fragmenta memory fragmentation right uh, so the generic uh, mechanism uh, simply speaking is based on a reservation based allocation. Uh, long story short, uh, this works uh, that uh, VM reserves uh, an area, uh, f continuous area in physical memory uh, when the virtual object is to be mapped. Uh, if and if that object is at least of super page size, then uh, when the process is using uh, this virtual object, the pages within are faulted and um, we fulfill the reservation map. Uh, and if we fill uh, the reservation map, we have the candidate for promotion to a super page. Uh, but if our process is lazy and doesn't want to uh, allocate much memory, uh, this would be just a waste of, of space, right? So. Uh, more active processes can evict 
the reservations of less active processes and get uh, the reservation uh, fully populated. So as you can see, this truly um, adapts to the actual system needs at that time. So our interface uh, with the generic wire was quite simple. Uh, we had to uh, provide two parameters uh, in sysarm include vmparam.h. Uh, first parameter was a vm and reserve level, and actually this, is, this specifies how many super pages are going to be used uh, in our system. And the second parameter is the vm level order, which for each uh, reservation level defines how many base pages uh, are within a super page of each level. And in our case, uh, the unreserved level is one, since we have one super page size, and the uh, reservation uh, level zero um, is eight, so um, this gives us 256 uh, base pages within the single super page. And of course, we had to um, implement a bunch of functions that will serve our purpose uh, with the super pages support. Uh, to create super page uh, from the base pages, we created the PMAP promote section and the complementary function uh, to demote uh, created super page. Uh, there may be a need to, uh, to enter a super page mapping directly. For example, in PMAP enter object, uh, if we know that the object is at least of the super page size and we get the info from, from the VM that the reservation is populated for that object, so it might be um, continuous in the physical memory. Uh, we can enter the object directly. And of course, uh, the method to removing the super page. Uh, we also needed some uh, sharing pages management, so PMAP PV promote and demote section were uh, implemented. And in general, we've made uh, a lot of changes to the PMAP module uh, to make it more uh, super pages aware. Now let's take a look at uh, the promotion process. First of all, uh, we need to get some uh, information from VM that the reservation is fully populated. Uh, this usually uh, can be done uh, when entering new mapping to the PMAP. Uh, so the PMAP enter is a good place for, for uh, creating the super pages. And then we have to, uh, to check some uh, conditions that are required to create a super page. First of all, our um, area under uh, newly created super page uh, has to be continuous in virtual address space and physical address spaces. Uh, if L2 be occupancy, uh, which indicates how many pages within L2 table uh, are already mapped is uh, filled, so it has a value of 256. We know that this area is consistent in the virtual address space since this is how uh, entries are organized in, in the uh, translation table. Uh, but we still have to check um, the, con the continuous continuity in uh, physical address space, so we need to loop over all entries uh, in the page table and check whether the, uh, the physical addresses uh, are, um, are okay, are consistent uh, in, the, in, the, in this area. Then we need to check uh, the page attributes and access permissions. Uh, since after cre super page creation, we have only one set of bits that indicate uh, the state of the page uh, and access permissions to the page. So we, we lose all other uh, information about the base pages all the base pages within the super page have to be uh, of the same attributes and access permissions. Uh, if we do that, um, we can allocate and set up a single uh, PV entry for a super page. So we can uh, free other entries uh, for that super page. Uh, then we create a section mapping out of the page directory in L1 table, but we don't deallocate L2 table. Uh, we're actually stashing it for later uh, in case of um, the necessity of page demotion. It's much more efficient to uh, 
to stash the auto table instead of allocating memory on runtime when we really need this. Uh, so if it, everything goes right, we do some cache and TLB maintenance and we, can, we are done. So summarizing this, uh, we can create a super page either by uh, promotion of the base pages to a super page or by a direct mapping in a pmap enter object. Uh, the area under super page has to be continuous in physical and virtual address spaces and needs to have a consistent uh, page attributes and access permissions. Uh, we preserve the corresponding L2 table and create one single PV entry for the entire super page. And in addition, we really prefer uh, creating read-only super page mappings. Uh, because again, uh, we have only one bit that indicates that the super page has been written or modified. Uh, so uh, if the only uh, small uh, region wi within the super page was modified, uh, there, was, there will be no way to determine which, which part of the super page was modified and we would need to write back to the external storage uh, the whole area under super page on page out. Uh, this can uh, cr create real uh, disk traffic that may, uh, that may cause uh, the performance degradation uh, that will overwhelm the, any of the advantages from the uh, less TLB misses. So it is, uh, it is better to change the attributes uh, of the base pages from read-write to read-only uh, if they were not already written uh, and uh, promote the page as read-only and demote it on the right attempt um, than, than promoting the whole page read-write. Of course, we can uh, promote the page uh, to write, uh, but only when all pages within that super page uh, were already modified. So this is summarizing. Uh, one more time quickly. We create uh, a section mapping instead of page directory, and we are stashing out the table for later. Now, uh, of course, there some, uh, at some point there will be a need to remove super page or demote the super page. Uh, we usually remove the super page uh, when the area that is going to be removed is at least super page size and was uh, mapped uh, by a super page mapping. Uh, or we tried to demote the super page, but we didn't find or could not allocate the L2 table. So uh, then we, get, we are getting rid of the super page and uh, we let the pages to fold, uh, fold in again. Uh, on the other hand, we usually demote super page when we are changing attributes of the base page of one of the base pages within it. Uh, or we are, uh, we are uh, paging out the base page within the super page or uh, we are trying to, to write to read only super page. This is something that I described a minute ago. So during the motion, uh, we recall the old table. Uh, we try to recreate it if, it's there, if there is no uh, available. But if we cannot uh, quickly allocate the memory, we just uh, drop, uh, drop the, uh, the motion and try to uh, delete the super page and there might be a need to fix up the obsolete entries in L2 table when uh, the, the attributes of the super page are changed in comparison to, uh, to the L2 tables entries then we just fix up the entries in L2 table and of course we have to fix up the L1 table accordingly uh, to serve uh, as a page directory uh, entry again uh, and of course, we recreate the PV entries that we dropped uh, when creating one single PV entry for the super page. So again, uh, we recreate the page directory entry and we recall, recreate, or fix up, if necessary, the L2 table. So uh, our implementation introduced uh, support for a new page size. Uh, we introduced one megabyte section mapping uh, used as a super page. 
uh, but we still use four kilobyte small pages as a base pages. So thanks to the implementation, uh, we can use one TLB entry to map 256 words base pages. And thanks to that, we have less TLB misses and shorter translation table walk uh, on, TLB, on TLB miss. Now, a few words about testing. The test tools that we used uh, are shown in the list. Uh, GAPS is a giga updates per second benchmark that measures uh, how many uh, accesses to the random memory location we can, uh, uh, we can do in a, a certain amount of time. Uh, we also use the LM bench uh, benchmarking suite, uh, which incorporates the stream benchmark uh, that measures uh, the memory bandwidth. But the results from the stream were, uh, stream were a little bit uh, overwhelmed but by the fact that uh, we don't have a good floating point support in FreeBSD at that time and, uh, and the stream is using uh, floating points. Uh, we also used a self-hosted build word uh, as a sanity check and we wanted to see how uh, our super pages behave in a um, common uh, system load. We use Ford Pomp uh, as a check, um, as a stress test uh, for the functionality. And also, we use some performance counters uh, that are implemented in ARM processors in order to uh, check uh, the TLB miss penalty with and without super pages. Uh, our test platform uh, was Armada XP. It's a quad core RV7 uh, chip. So these are, uh, the results are described as follows. Uh, first row is the GAPS benchmark. Uh, as you can see, uh, the CPU time spent on the test has decreased on about 30%. And in that time, we've made 30% uh, more uh, updates to the random uh, memory locations. Uh, the, the numbers are in uh, billions per second, right? Uh, second row is LM bench, and as I said, the results are not so noticeable uh, as they are in GAPS, but we can see uh, the random memory latency improvement by 38%, so uh, we have 38% quicker uh, access to the, to, the, mm, to the memory according to LM bench. Uh, on the build world, uh, we had uh, over one hour improvement using G GCC and no improvement using Clank. Uh, and all of the shown results are um, with the page tables uh, not cacheable. Recently it was changed that page tables are cacheable and the results on Armada XP may differ, but the trend is the same. And now testing with the uh, uh, PMU counters. So we used uh, per CPU TLB miss counters and per CPU cycles counters. And the goals were to estimate because it's very difficult to exactly measure the TLB miss penalty. Uh, and we wanted to see uh, the reduction of the TLB misses uh, when using super pages. So the test was very simple. Uh, it was uh, first we allocated twice as much memory as uh, entries in the TLB times super page size. Uh, we enabled the uh, user access to the PMU counters. We had to configure one of the PMU counters to account TLB misses, since uh, CPU uh, CPU cycles counter uh, is dedicated for each CPU. And this test was performed as follows. Uh, we allocate memory. Uh, we touched all the four kilobyte pages within that range to pre-fold all the pages. Uh, so when super pages are enabled, we suppose uh, the super page were created in that area. Uh, then we enable PM PMU counters and we touch, uh, here it's written 64 pages because my TLB uh, was 64 entries. So we touch uh, TLB size 
pages with one megabyte interval. So in that case, we have TLB misses in both, in both situations with and without uh, super pages. But with super pages, we assume that um, there will be a super page and our translation table walk will be shorter. So we disable PMU counters and get the CPU cycles count and TLB miscount. Now from this simple uh, formula, uh, we get the number of uh, CPU cycles per TLB miss. Of course, we needed to know uh, the exactly amount of cycles uh, in a row loop without TLB misses and with TLB misses. Uh, and the, the results are as follows. We have uh, decreased the number of CPU cycles per TLB missed by 100 in our test. Uh, and in 256 iterations through uh, 64 megabyte area, uh, we decreased uh, the TLB miss number. Uh, I think uh, this is an extreme example, but, uh, but this, this is uh, the result of less TLB misses in a, in a uh, wider area. Uh, in a longer work. So uh, what can be done next? Uh, well, we would like to see the support for 64 kilobyte pages. Uh, we think that th this will further improve the performance since more applications will be able to use the super pages. Uh, so the less uh, memory consuming applications will be able to create the super pages and also uh, the promotion with will be uh, more uh, uh, will be uh, divided into more stages. So on each stage, we'll uh, we can we'll can to uh, utilize the super pages technique. Uh, in about a week, we are going to enable super pages by default because currently. The, the feature is disabled by default and you can enable it in, in the pmap-v6.c uh, by uh, putting uh, one into SP enabled or positive value into SP enabled uh, or in, uh, in the loader. But in a week it should be enabled by default uh, in the mainline. The code, uh, currently the code is available from FreeBSD 10. Uh, this is back by the way. And uh, we also would like to move all status flags from PV entries to uh, page table entries. Uh, this will probably give us less overhead on promotion failures since we'll not need to iterate through uh, the list of PV entries each time. Um, but currently we can't do this because we have no spare room in the page table entries and we can uh, overcome this issue by enabling type extension uh, and this should give us additional two bits in the page table entry descriptor and in general this will give us uh, faster page management all over pmap uh, if you are further interested in this project um, you can visit the wiki page uh, free on freebsd.org on super pages and there is also um, a paper available which describes much more uh, with much more details uh, everything that I was uh, saying here and it is available on the download page uh, of semihealth.com and probably it will be av available uh, from the from the conference website I don't know uh, and at the end I would like to thank the following per uh, people especially Grzegorz Bernatski and Mr. Alan Cox for their great help during the project. And of course, uh, to the project mentors and sponsors, which are Rafał Jaworowski and Bartłomiej Sierka from SemiHealth. And of course, the FreeBSD Foundation uh, that sponsored this project. So that would be all from me. If you have any questions, then I will be happy to answer. Yes? You didn't see a performance improvement with Clem. Yes. Uh, actually, no, because uh, we don't know the reason. Probably, um, the Clang is utilizing memory in a different matter, in a different way than GCC, and uh, we don't know why. Why is that? Or 
there any other questions? Why PMAP copy was disabled? Yeah. Yes, PMAP copy was disabled because uh, we had a locking problem uh, in the PMAP. Uh, unlike the other implementations for other architectures, we allocate our memory for page tables uh, using UMA allocator. Uh, and because of that, we have to uh, drop the lock, take the lock, and so on and so on and it was lock order uh, reversal problem in the PMAP copy. So uh, to fix that, we really need to get rid of UMA from PMAP and make the page table memory, the, the memory allocation for page table pages like it is done uh, on other architectures. So if that is all, then Thank you very much for your attention.